Welcome to part 4 of the GUTFT tutorial series. In this video, we will be moving away from Windows applications and switching to an MSP430 microcontroller to send commands to the TFT module. And our end goal for this tutorial is to create a program that recalls the images that were stored on the, the modules FROM2 in part 3 of this tutorial series. This will be performed by wiring up the MSP430 to the TFT module, be importing the library into the IAR for MSP430 IDE, we'll be coding the example and running the example on the MSP430 which communicates with the GUTFT module. And there's a few items that are needed for this tutorial. Only the IDE, which is IAR for MSP430, which I already have installed. This installation is fairly simple. You can go to the IAR website, search for MSP430, navigate to Tools for MSP430, and then download IAR for MSP430. The only hassle with downloading this IDE is that you will have to register with IAR in order to get a license number for either the size limited free trial or the time limited free trial. Now I have the size limited free trial because I can use it indefinitely as opposed to the time limited free trial. You also need the MSP EXP 430 F5529LP. You'll need a GUTFT from Noritake. You'll need a wiring kit that allows you to wire up the MSP430 to the GUTFT unit and a five volt external power source to be hooked up to the GUTFT that can provide at least 800 milliamps of current. So once you've verified that you have all the items and software required for this tutorial, the first thing to do is to wire up the GUTFT to the MSP430. Now first off, we need to note that the signal voltages for the GUTFT are 3.3 volts. Now this can cause some confusion when using different microcontrollers. Now with the MSP430, there is no confusion because that also uses 3.3 volt signals. But using an embedded controller like an Arduino Uno does require level shifting as it uses 5 volt signals as well when it's hooked up to a USB cord. The GUTFT comes with three interfaces, SPI, I2C, and asynchronous serial. Now when using our library for MSP430, SPI or serial peripheral interface will be connected as such, starting from the GUTFT side. Pin 2 as the S clock to P3.2, pin 3 MOSI connected to P3.0, pin 4 module busy connected to P4.0, pin 5 chip select connected to P2.6, and pin 6 MISO connected to P3.1. And with I2C, or the inter-integrated circuit, connections are as follows. Pin 2, serial clock, connected to P4.2. Pin 3, serial data, connected to P4.1. Pin 4, module busy, connected to P1.6. And pin 7, transmit ready, connected to P8.2. And for the interface that we'll be using, asynchronous serial, connections will be pin 3, receive, connected to P3.3. Pin 4, module busy, connected to P4.0. Pin 5, host busy, connected to P2.6. And pin 6, transmit, connected to P3.4. And attach ground to ground as well. So once you've wired up your MSP430 to your GUTFT, let's head on over to the IAR embedded workbench so we can make a project. So let's go over to project, create new project. Make sure the tool chain is MSP430. Expand the C node and click on main. So we have a C project with an automatically generated main file. Hit OK. And now you need to specify where your project is going to reside. Mine's going to reside on my YouTube folder on my desktop. I'm going to name it recall images. Save. Now that your project's been created, let's go over to the workspace area. Right click and hit options. Now the device that it defaults to is not the correct device for what we're going to be using. 
Let's click on this button. Go all the way down to MSP430 X5 XX family. Go down to MSP430 F55 and go to MSP430 F5529 because that's the device that we're using. And go on over to debugger and switch from simulator to FET debugger and hit OK. Now once those settings have been set, let's go over and download the code library. As a side note, the GUTFT library is not required to communicate with the GUTFT. Communication with this module is based on byte commands. If you are not interested in the GUTFT code library, but are still interested in learning the image recall command, you can click here to skip ahead to the command description. So we're going to go to nortakeelec.com. Mouse over support and go to code libraries. Scroll down until you get to MSP430 code library. Click on that. Take you to the hub that has all of our MSP430 code libraries. Make sure that you're at the GUTFT series section and click on Noritake VFT GUTFT to download the code library. Once the download's finished, go to our downloads folder. Going to extract. Now it's automatically opening the extracted folder. I'm going to close that for now and open up another Windows Explorer and navigate to my project. Going to open that folder back up. I'm going to click on library source and we want to copy all these files over to our project and paste. And we can head back over to IAR, right click on the top node again, go down to add and add files. We're going to add all of .c files to our project, except for main.c. Hit open, they've all been included. Now to include the .h files, we need to use pound include. So I'll do pound include gutft.h pound include gutft underscore uart underscore interface dot h pound include gutft spi interface.h pound include gutft i2c interface.h and with that we can make the entire project so I'll hit make and it will ask where we want to save our workspace I'll save it in the same folder as our project and name it recall images and hit save little mistake but that's okay I'll hit make again and we have two warnings but that's okay and you notice that .h files have been included under our project once you've configured your project, we can start writing the code to recall the three images that were stored onto the TFT. So first off, we want to initialize the UART communication. So we'll do init UART. Now we want to initialize the GUTFT. Write GUTFT init. And then we have to write in the width and the height in pixels. So we'll do 800 for the width. 480 for the height. Now we'll write the command to draw the stored image. So we'll do GUTFT stored bit image raw. It has quite a few parameters, but we can walk this through fairly easily. The first parameter is the memory. 
So if we go over to our geotft.c, down to same function, we can look at the comments and see that the memory that we want to use is fram2. And if you remember from part three, the base of our address is zero, zero. So we want zero x 10. So go back and write zero x 10. Next, we want the address that the image is stored into. So keeping with the same theme, we're looking for these two first bytes, which for us is all zero. So zero x zero, 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 zero. The next parameter is the extension address, which will be the third byte in the address. And for the first image is also zero x zero, zero. We want the x defined width, which is 800. So you can see the entire width of the image. Now we want the width and the height. So we'll do 800 and then 480. And the last parameter is the type of image that's going to be displayed. And ours is a color 16 bit high speed format. So we'll do hex 91, 0 x 91. Now we want to show all three images. So let's go ahead and copy and paste this command twice more. And the only difference of these other two images is the extension address. If you remember from part three, the extension address of the second image is 0C, and the extension of the third image is 18. So I will make that. So once you've made your project again, let's plug in MSP430. Now, if you have not plugged your MSP430 in before, you may have to install some drivers, but that's done automatically. So once your MSP430 is ready to use, let's hit download and debug. It'll download the program and switch us over to debug mode. And what I want to do is use this button, the step over button, to step over each line of code and execute each line of code individually. So once I press this button, it's execute that first line of code. And it stops the watchdog timer. And we'll initialize the UART, initialize the GUTFT, draw the first image, draw the second image, and draw the third image. Now what's great about recalling images instead of sending all the raw data of the image to the module is it offloads the memory requirements to the display as opposed to the microcontroller. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for part 4.5 where we do the same thing but with an Arduino.